Setting up a customer card. Go to the card file in the command center and select cards list. You can click straight onto the customer tabs or you can stay on the all card tabs. Either way, if you hit new, the customer the card type customer will come up first. So in here you can put the customer's name or the company name. You can even have either have a company card or you can change up here to an individual or a person card and put their last name and first name in. But let's do a company card because it's really the same either way. So let's create a card called Joe Blogs or Blogs <laughs> Marketing and hit tab. Now you can put a card ID in here which is what it's actually used for if you want to give your customers uh, customer numbers or card numbers and you can actually change your MyOB um, to go by card number or customer number instead of name so when you're entering a sale you put in their customer number instead of their name. I tend to go by name because you're more likely to remember a name than a number. Then you go to the address part. Now you can have uh, up to, let's see, five addresses. Now the first one is always the bill to, the second one is the ship to. But then you can have three other addresses, which can be three other ship to's or three other bill to's or whatever you want them to be. So let's just put a bill to in for this one and we'll go post office box 555 Bluegsville or whatever it is, you know. Uh, now you can put three phone numbers in, a fax number and an email. Now email is really handy because if you raise invoices you can email them straight out of MyOB if you've got an email address in there. You can put a website in there which is really just more for information, salutation, Mr and Mrs and the contact name. Right. I'm not going to put any other information in there. I'm going to go to card details. Now you can put some notes in here like likes the hamburgers without cheese or anything like that. Uh, now you can give it an identifier. So what you could do is uh, give each state an identifier and then you can run reports by identifiers or um, whatever identifier you want to use and you can run reports and just get those customers that have a particular identifier. Now a custom list is similar to identifiers. You can create a custom list for wholesale customers or for retail customers or for customers with big noses or customers with small noses, whatever you want. But if you're a small business um, and you really don't need that, you, you just bypass this and go straight to the selling details. Now this is where things can be really handy. You can set them to have an item or a service invoice or a professional invoice or a miscellaneous invoice. So every time you bring up that customer in sales, it will bring up the type of invoice that you want. And you can do the same with printed form. You might have a uh, one form for seven day payment customers, one form for eight day payment customers or one form for 30 day customers or as many forms as you might have. I personally just have the one. Uh, now you can also have, you can also set the delivery where it will be emailed to them automatically, printed and emailed or just printed. Um, you can always change that within the invoice when you're raising it anyway even if it's not the one you want. Here's really handy, you can set the income account where you want sales to this customer to go if you're doing a service invoice. So if you're doing a service invoice and this customer always gets bookkeeping, you can select the income account of bookkeeping. Or if they always get secretarial, you can set it as secretarial, whatever you want to do. That mainly applies to a service invoice. You can put a receipt memo in to go with this customer every time it goes out. You can enter salespeople, you can have individualized comments like like Happy Easter, pay as soon as you get can, thank you, whatever you like. Uh, and you can have shipping method if you know they use a particular courier. And you can hit cancel. Here uh, you can put their ABN number if you want. That's really not necessary for customers, that's more relevant for suppliers because they must be registered for GST to deal with them of course. At this point you can put the sales code uh, relating to that customer. Uh, 
for instance, if you're registered for GST and your normal sales code is GST, but this is an overseas customer or an export customer, then you can change it to free. The same with the freight code. You can set terms up in here, payment due at the end of the month. They get a discount after so many days, and of course then you've got to set your discounts in, and the balance is due on a certain date. You can also set in your payment details if they always pay by FPOS or check. Um, which is handy when you uh, receive receiving payments, you know, to save you putting that in. You can have a contact lot and put more contacts in. If this customer relates to a particular job, you can apply the job number and the history over here will just give you the history of your sales once you start selling to that customer. So you can go back in and see that customer's history of sales once you start selling them to them. And after you've entered all that, you just hit OK. And that's how you set up a customer card.